since I hear about you ordering more tests performed with sample 4157, that fact failed spectacularly. I saw a variance in the results that we never accounted for, so I had the techs run the trial again. And the results were 0.003% different this time. Do the words statistically insignificant mean anything to you? Of course, but we're obligated to explore every possibility. We're obligated to get a working formula before Akande has us all in tanks to help test the next batch of samples. Now get to work! All right, I'm going. I am en route, Captain. My mysterious Sprat Savior. What an unexpected surprise. But what are you doing here? On the other side of the lab? Why, that requires a top-level clearance. After all, we're running low on the stuff. Oh, very well. I really shouldn't be doing this. But you did help me out. Take this key card. It'll get you into the hibernation lab where the remaining dimethyl sulfoxide is. If you're seen by any of the guards, however, I'm afraid I can't help. Good luck.
Let the record show that subject 23K's cause of death is cerebral vascular incident brought about by a ruptured aneurysm. That's an 86% failure rate for this batch. I think we can safely move on to the next. And I had such high hopes for this one. Oh well, I suppose it could have been worse. Yeah, they could have ended up like those poor bastards in Haiti. <laughs> Something's... No visitors allowed, citizen. I'm gonna need to see some identification. Let me guess. She's still holding the ketchup packet incident over Holt's head. Right? We've talked to her before. She can't keep letting her special friends down here. Just get out of here. I don't want to catch you hanging around. Nothing exciting ever happens around here. Sure. Understood. On my way. Impressive as always.
Something's not right. I'm gonna go have a look. Something's not right. I'm gonna go have a look. Mind's playing tricks on me. This area is for authorized personnel only. You're not supposed to be here, are you? What are you talking about? I knew it. I knew someone would find out. I gotta think of what I'm gonna say. Listen, I won't tell anyone I saw you if you don't tell about me. Just this once, all right? Trespassing in the Ministry of Accuracy and Morale is punishable by death. You've got one chance to explain why I shouldn't blow you away right now. Well, why not? This thing isn't just for show.
I didn't even think of that. Uh, may may maybe, maybe we can just pretend you weren't here. But if I see you here again, I'm taking my chances. I think I'm gonna start taking my lunches out in the city. That woman from downstairs is still in the cafeteria. That scientist? The one who's been pounding the clerks? Ooh, gives me the shudders, too. They're all pretty unpleasant. What do you think they actually do down there? Best not to ask. Remember that one clerk, Emily? She found a badge one of them had dropped and went down to return it? Never saw her again. What do you think you're doing? I think we can both agree that Maverick Johnston is the finest director in Halcyon.
Don't you think we ought to go inside? I suppose. There's an outside possibility we'll run into Spencer Woolrich. I don't know if I can handle a run-in with Mr. Woolrich. I'd just stand there, gawking, starstruck. You would, wouldn't you? And then I'd be embarrassed by association with you. Maybe we should just stay outside. <laughs> By consenting to an audition, you have granted Odeon Pictures all rights to use your likeness, voice, distinctive habits, and manner of dress in perpetuity. Thank you for your time.
Rizzo's mock apple cider. All right. A hard How cider does this sound? for a hard life. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to walk into you like that. Oh, my goodness. Ruth Bellamy? I simply adore your work. We've been over this already. You can't rehearse running into Ruth Bellamy. It's not going to work. Fine, fine. What about this? Oh, my stars! It's Halcyon Helen? May I have your autograph? Now you just sound like a crazed fan, which I suppose is not far from the truth. I tell you what. Rizzo's purple berry contract says for you. A soft sour candy shell around a sweet purple berry flavored scent. Antibiotics. Why can't something Take comfort in knowing that anything antibiotics cannot stop will probably kill you quickly. Crew members Ellie and Max are engaged in a heated discussion in the kitchen. Max. Maximilian. Vicar. Vicky. Yes? Aw, oh, this is no fun anymore. Yes, you caught me ruminating again. Guilty as charged. What's occupying your thoughts? Hey, Cap. Good to see you, boss. Battery levels are fully charged. Thank you, customer. Sam, merciless on germs. Need something? Something on your mind?
If you don't mind my saying, you have a message from adjutant Sophia Akande. No one ever looks quite the same in person as they do in my reports. And my reports of you have been exceptionally thorough. You've had quite a career. I'm glad to hear that. This may come as a surprise, but I happen to enjoy your work. I've been keeping up with you ever since Emerald Vale. Now that was an interesting piece of work. A run-down backwater, barely worth the ink on a map. Until you showed up. When you cut off power to Edgewater, you saved me a great deal of trouble. Now I don't have to bother trying to save that town. All this happened because some mysterious stranger fell out of the sky. Not always. For the longest time, I could never be sure if you were on our side or against us. You should be back on the Hope, frozen in a hibernation chamber. Yet here you are, flying about in a stolen ship, leaving a trail of paperwork in your wake. The board doesn't know what to make of you. But I do. I've seen your potential. There's so much we can do for this colony. You haven't exactly been keeping it a secret. We raised security on the Hope after Wells broke in. As for discovering the identity of the missing colonist, all we had to do was scan the passenger manifest. Then let me help you make up your mind. You have something I want. I'd like to negotiate. There's exactly one vessel in all of Byzantium that looks like it dropped out of an Aether Wave drama. Phineas Wells is wanted by the board. I want to convince you to turn him in to us. He has a litany of charges against him. Vandalism, illegal experimentation, sedition. I could go on. Wells is a dangerous madman. His plan is going to endanger everyone in Halcyon. He's an obsessive psychopath. And he's using you. You're in contact with Wells. I want you to send us a tracing signal from his communication terminal. Wells was our mistake. We failed to apprehend him for years. I'm asking you to help me correct that mistake. I'm sending you my access code. Contact me from Wells' terminal. When you're done, come speak to me in my office. Adjutant Akande's call has been terminated. Will there be anything else, Captain? We have successfully arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain, and we are still in one piece. Shall I congratulate myself, or would you like to do the honors?
in your absence, optimized my formula. I'm now confident I can revive the remaining colonists. All I need now is the dimethyl sulfoxide. I'll take as much as you can give me. What? Oh, yes, well, that's obvious. Anyone with two working lamps can see this colony slouching toward oblivion. Why do you think we've been doing all this? I revived you to help me save Halcyon from annihilation. Hold on. Let me see if I understand this correctly. You're saying that Halcyon's on the brink of total collapse? And the Chairman's plan to save all of us is to save himself? I always knew Halcyon was heading toward a system's collapse, but I never imagined we were already there. The board made this crisis, and now they want to solve it by freezing the rest of us? That's not a plan. That's a goddamn escape clause. That makes two things we don't have. Time and chemicals to revive the other settlers. None of this was supposed to happen. I was supposed to revive the Hope's colonists. We were supposed to have enough time to solve the problem before we all starved. Human test subjects. Oh, that's grotesque. That's unthinkable. That's exactly what I'd expect out of the board. Thank you. You've brought me enough chemicals to get started, at least. I'm just sorry they came at the cost of human lives. Those poor people, they must have died in agony. What exactly was the board trying to accomplish? You say the board's trying to freeze their subjects over and over again without inflicting permanent damage? Well, they're nowhere close to solving that problem. I'll tell you this much. The board scientists are hopelessly lost. After years of fruitless experimentation, they've made exactly zero progress. We're out of time. We're out of chemicals. We may very well be out of options. If the board has their way, we're all going to be spending the rest of our lives frozen in stasis. Do you realize what this means for the Hope? For your fellow colonists? The board's going to kill them all. Toss them out into space, just to make room in their hibernation chambers. Short of lining up every member of the board and shooting them in the back of the head. Do you know what's waiting for us on the Hope? Scientists, engineers, artists, the brightest minds Earth ever sent us, uncorrupted by the board. The board's going to dispose of them all and transform the Hope into a prison for the rest of us. They're likely on their way to the Hope as we speak. We need to get to those colonists before the board. I have enough chemicals to start reviving a few of them, but no easy way to get them off the hope. Merciful gibbering law! You're a genius! We bring the hope to us. Skip the entire ship across the distance of colony space, right next to my lab. Exactly. You're a step ahead of me, but I perceive the shape of your plan. If we link up the hope to the unreliable, then use your navigational computer to calculate a reasonably safe vector, we can skip the entire colony ship into the rings of Terra 2. I don't know much about skip drives, not the physics, anyhow. I do know the hope's real massive. How is our bitty little ship supposed to skip it? Excellent question, my sharp-witted mechanic. You will use your own ship to power up the Hope skip drive. Your navigational computer can handle the rest. And that's going to work. 
without killing us in the process. I thought interest system micro jumps were prohibited for a reason. Yes, yes, there's always a risk of a catastrophic collision between the Hope and, say, Terra 2, in theory. But you'll be fine, provided your calculations are correct. You'll need to switch on the Hope's auxiliary power using the unreliable. Then, head to the bridge. Your navigational computer, Ada, should be able to activate the Hope skip drive. Once you've skipped the Hope next to my lab, I'll have easy access to the frozen colonists. I can start reviving them immediately. Certainly. How can I help? It wouldn't surprise me. When I pulled you out of the hope, the board nearly intercepted me. I expect they stepped up security since my little act of larceny. Unlikely. The Hope is as massive as the Groundbreaker, but compared to the Rings of Terra 2, positively minuscule. The board might notice, possibly, depending on the position of their heads relative to the depth of their collective posteriors. Skip drives were never designed to be used within a system, but I skipped my ship across Halcyon when I rescued you, and that turned out fine, mostly. That is, I ruined my ship and nearly killed myself in the process, but the maneuver was well within acceptable margins of risk. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I know you're wondering why I'm doing all this. Why I believe the people on the Hope are the answer to the colony's problems. The Hope is carrying some of humanity's most brilliant thinkers, scientists, engineers, experts in their field. If we work together, we can still find a way to save Halcyon. The board would have us believe Halcyon is beyond saving. I choose to believe otherwise. If there's even the slightest chance we can save Halcyon from oblivion, then we have to take it. You absolutely should. The adjutant must have sent you some kind of tracking code. If you don't use the code, she'll suspect you betrayed her. I think you should use the code and send a corrupted tracking signal. That should buy me some time. The enemy is bound to discover my hideout sooner or later. I'm prepared for that eventuality. This is just my way of buying myself a little time. Use my communications terminal to corrupt the tracking signal. While the board busies themselves trying to decipher it, I'll have plenty of time to prepare my defenses. Certainly. How can I help?
reaction to it. You've bought me more than enough time. I won't wish you luck on the hope. Can't rely on luck. Rigorous calculations and sound logic. That's the ticket. What's on your mind? Captain, Felix and the Vicar are arguing again. <laughs> Young Millstone, you look pensive. I don't know what that means, but I've been thinking. It ain't easy carrying a torch for the Rangers. <laughs> I understand. The Rangers' victories are your victories. Their defeats are likewise crushing. Are you serious? Wow, Max. Never expected you'd understand. This may come as a surprise to you, Felix, but I understand what it is to be a fan. That's so. You know something? Maybe I was wrong about you. To be a fan is to live vicariously through another. You feel you are one with the Rangers. You ain't been the same ever since your drug swing, Max. Hey, boss, I want to talk to you. You know, they're gonna make a serial about our adventures one day. I've been trying to think of a good title for this episode. I like the sound of the skip job. No, 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 wait, I got it. Hope in dark times. Get it? Hope? Like the ship. That's what folks in the business call wordplay. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Got a list right here. Thrilling tales of the unreliable. Or maybe spine-chilling stories from the edge of the system. Was also considering astounding adventures in the other. I'm partial to that last one. Not bad. Got a nice ring to it. Stealing the hope from the board, skipping it across the whole damn system. <laughs> this is gonna be great. I can't wait. Enough to boost my pay? I'm just kidding, boss. I know you don't pay me. I'm sure you've got plans to make. As for me, I gotta keep practicing my signature dropkick. The hope might have cameras.
As always, I am at your disposal. Anything you'd like to discuss? So we're really gonna do this? I've seen lots of crazy, Captain, but Phineas is in a class of his own. Do you really think he knows what he's doing? Sending us to skip the Hope into Teratu's orbit right under the board's nose? Something tells me you're the first person to ever utter those words, Captain. I think this whole plan's insane, but it'll make a good story, you know, if we survive. Speaking of, I get that Phineas thinks he's saving the colony, but what about you? Why risk your neck on this crazy scheme? I'll do anything for a good story. And nothing shines on a pirate's resume like a successful suicide mission. But I asked you first. Coming from anyone else, that would sound like a line from one of those Odeon Pictures movies. But I think you really mean it. Still, all this depends on the other Hope colonists. Are they gonna pull us out of the shit? Or are we all just gonna leave a bigger, uglier stain on this corner of the galaxy? This is why I like you, Captain. Well, whenever you're ready to do this, I'm with you. Anything else? Hey, Cap. 